Kim, you ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, to the July 12th Planning Commission meeting, can I ask you to stand and uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, can I have the clerk uh, call the roll, please? Commissioner White? Here. Commissioner Dukas? Here. Chair Rodriguez? Here. And Commissioner Onstad is absent. Commissioner Cassidy? Here. Okay, item four, public comments. This is the time of the cal calendar for the public to speak on any items that are not on the agenda today. I have no speaker cards. Is there any? Anybody out there with any, any other items? Okay, moving on to number five, approval of June 14th, 2018 minutes. So do I have a motion? I'll move to approve. Second. All right. Okay, moving on to item six, approval of June 21, 2018 minutes. Do I have a motion? Um, I'll move approval. Second. Okay. Okay, moving on to item seven, case number PL170014 and PL17-0015, continued from the 21st of uh, June to today. Um, staff? Good morning, how Good morning. are you? Chair Rodriguez, commission, commissioners, Nicole Donor for the case uh, uh, before you, the property owner would like to ask for a request or request to continue the this hearing today, in order for their coastal engineer to provide the additional reports requested at your June twenty first planning commission meeting, and be allowed to attend the meeting. They are not available today, and so that is the re that is the reason for their request for continuance. If you have any questions, is there is there a date certain when yes, they will I'm be sorry. available? Yes, I'm sorry, August twenty third, twenty eighteen, at eight thirty a.m. I'm sorry. Could you say mm -hmm. that again? I'm getting an echo. August twenty third, twenty eighteen, at eight thirty a.m. Uh, no, no comments. Okay. Let's we'll move to continue it then until uh, the 23rd, August at 8.30. I, I, I would move to continue as per the recommendation of staff. I'll second that. Thank you. So, commissioners, um, I just want to take a moment to recognize Nicole Toner. It's her last day of work today. She's mm -hmm. retiring. Um, and I just wanted to say, I mean, so this is very anticlimactic, all of the work that she does at the county. She comes here for a continuance. But uh, Nicole has run our, our cultural heritage program for years. This is her second time back with the county. She's been here for 10 years. And she lives in the historic district. She's very passionate about it. Our cultural heritage program would be nothing without Nicole Donor. And so I am so sad to see her go, but so happy for her new adventures. And so I wanted just to recognize her for a moment and say, 
Ah, she's a great planner, and I'm happy for her. So good for you. Your last meeting should always be an easy meeting. <laughs> Enjoy your retirement. Okay, uh, we'll take a verbal roll call on that motion. Commissioner. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Dukas. Aye. Commissioner Kessler. Aye. And I also say aye. Okay, item eight, uh, case number PL17 0036, Green Somas LLC applicant. Good morning, Chair Rodriguez, members of the Commission. My name is Charles Anthony. I'm a planner with the Ventura County Planning Division. I'm here today to discuss Green Somas' request for a CUP for agricultural production, sales, and promotional uses. The project the proposed project is located on 5870 Los Angeles Avenue and Highway 118, as you can see. We will discuss, and you can see on the photo there that there's existing development, and we will be discussing more of those details of development in a few minutes. Also, the, the photo shows, the slide shows a good example of the, uh, the barranca here to the southwest, and then also um, the ag, ag, um, operations and activities of surrounding the property. Land use designation is it's AE, which is Agricultural Exclusive uh, Zoning Ordinance, or Zoning Designation, uh, 40 acres minimum parcel size, and the General Plan Land Use Designation is also Agricultural. The project is not located within an area plan. Let me ask a question. What are, what's the yellow line and the red line and the red and yellow line? Yeah, the, the red line is the zoning. So the, it's a distinction between, let me use the pointer here. Uh, the red line here is a distinction between this area here would be all the AE or ag, agricultural exclusive zoning. And then on the other side of that line, you can see up here, it's RA, which would be um, uh, rural agricultural zone up here in this area and so on. The designated that way. And then the yellow line has to do with the general plan land use designation. And that's the separation here. So in this area here, you can see the yellow is agricultural. And then on the other side of the line, it uh, looks like it's, it's probably open space. I don't see it showing there, but I'm assuming it's open space. Question. That site, this site, is located south of LA Avenue? Yes. LA Avenue is located right here, Highway okay. 118, LA Avenue, and then the interchange over here, um, intersection here with uh, Highway 34 is located over here. So it's really close to that exchange. Okay. The project site, this is a photo of the current project site, as you can see in the photo. On the slide is that there is the, some of the existing structures that are out there. Those are some of the greenhouses. Um, you see the asphalt. You can also see the one of the office units, existing office units that's there. Um, this site, is, as I mentioned before, has been developed. Uh, the entire lot is de has been developed over the years. Just another site, uh, another uh, photo on the slide. This is in the southern area, looking northward. Just to give you, again, a sense of the, of the area. So the previous permittee was Coast Nurseries. In 2009, the Planning Commission granted a conditional use permit to Coast Nurseries to develop and operate the site as a nursery. 
In 2010, the Ventura County Code Compliance Division opened a violation case against Coast Nurseries, Coast Nurseries because they did not obtain or renew required permits for their existing agricultural structures, machinery, and equipment. In 2016, Coast Nursery CUP expired because of non-use. Um, in 2016, Green Somas enters a into a compliance agreement, they're the new owner at this point, into a compliance agreement with the Code Compliance Division to abate all violations, use several existing structures to grow and sell plants on a limited basis, and then also to submit a new CUP application to expand the agricultural operation. And this slide here that shows the, in green, it shows the existing structures that are being used now on a limited basis. And this is their existing plant growing facility in which they're currently selling orchids and orchid related material uh, products. There's an existing greenhouse there, um, which you can see the larger 18,000 square feet approximately. They're using also a 600 square foot office, a small ag sales facility, and a farm worker dwelling. The CUP proposal includes certain existing structures that do have building permits into the new CUP, such as existing greenhouses, offices, one farm worker dwelling, a water tank, electrical building, and a soil mixing building. Also within their CUP request, uh, they will be required to obtain building permits for several existing structures with expired building permits, and that's consistent with their compliance agreement. And this photo just shows an example of one of the structures, and uh, this is a greenhouse number two, and that, it, of course, it exists, and they just need to get a building permit for that, and they're working with the county staff to, 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 take, to take care of that. Green Somos will also demolish several other existing permitted and non-permitted structures, such as greenhouses and plug houses, which are similar to greenhouses, shade structures, storage containers and storage building, a storage building, small ag sales facility, chemical storage building, and a generator. The, on this slide is, a, uh, is the site plan. And you can see on the, the proposed structures, the new proposed structures in the parallel uh, lines, diagonal lines on some of those structures. And then some of those details of those structures is that they'll be asking for uh, new greenhouses and new structures for storage, product staging, shipping, and maintenance to utilize uh, utilizing the greenhouse structural design shown there on the slide. Of a pro this will total approximately 422,000 square feet of new structures in, uh, in the greenhouse design. The maximum height of these structures is, is 25 feet. The, um, they also propose a new agricultural sales building at 3,525 square feet, which will include uh, agricultural product sales, honey wine tasting from a, um, another structure and use I'll discuss in a moment, um, and as well as some other products. Uh, this is approximately 20 feet high and it'll be made of wood and glass. Also, another, another one of the new structures is a new meadery, which is a honey wine production uh, facility, and apiary support, which is the honey production. This building will be 14,600 square feet and includes mead brewing lab, a honey factory, product design, product design lab, a warehouse, office area, and conference room. This is a two-story building. It'll be approximately 25 feet high. It's gonna be made of glass, aluminum, a fiberglass, a translucent fiberglass material, as well as wood. And another new structure is a new employee support services building, which will include a lunchroom, restrooms, and showers for their employees. Proposed to be 2,400 square feet. It's approximately 20 feet high. It'll be made out of corrugated pre-finished metal panels. This is the uh, example of the, one of the three farm worker dwellings at two bedrooms, 747 square feet. 
again, these are proposed and new. This will be in addition to the, the one existing farm worker dwelling that's on site. The new agricultural promotional activities are also requested. Uh, this would be agricultural themed educational activities and classes, a summer day camp for kids, farm animal experience such as like a petting zoo and that's what these photos are showing as examples of what it would look like. A demonstration garden, displays of agricultural practices and local ag history and so on. May I ask a question? Yes. Um, how many people can come to the uh, ag promotional events? The, is it set up for? The, specifically for, I, I don't have an exact number for what that, what's allowed, but I can look in to see what's allowed in the ag facility or the ag sales building, the maximum number of people that's a, that are allowed in that. But the, we don't have a specific number that, I, I don't recall that we have a specific number of maximum people that are allowed for the ag promotional uses. But what is, what is the limiting factor is the parking. And so parking, they're allowed 18 parking spaces on site for, for that facility, um, specifically for ag promotional uses. But they could also use some of the other, if, for instance, something that was going to be held inside of the ag sales building, some promotional activity was in there, the parking would also be allowed there as well. Next is the stormwater detention basin, which will be built when they come in to build these new structures. And this is located on the so southwestern portion of the property, um, right next to the Branca. The environmental document uh, was a mitigated negative, negative declaration, or is a MND. Potentially significant impacts to water resources and biological resources, but mitigation measures will reduce impacts to less than significant. Using adopted thresholds and standards, county agencies determined the proposed project would have less than a significant impact on all other resources, public facilities, hazards, and land uses. The, one of the potentially significant impact areas was on the surface water, surface water quality. And the county stormwater programs um, imposed a post-construction stormwater management plan, which requires best management practice, practices um, devices to treat new surface water runoff. And in this case, primarily, that's going to be the detention basin will be the treatment for uh, the runoff that would occur on the site before it actually enters into the Barranca and other downstream waters. Next potential impact area was to nesting least bells vireo and other nesting birds. Um, and the, the impact was identified potentially uh, from construction noise and construction vibrations. And the mitigation measure, however, the mitigation measure that would reduce its impacts to less than significant would be the, the avoidance and protection measures during nesting season. And that, that's the usual type of, of uh, protection measure of either constructing outside of the nesting season or if they do, to make sure that the surveys identify where the location of the nesting birds are and that the construction is set back at a sufficient distance. With the waters and the next uh, potential impact area was waters and wetlands. Uh, the concern was that there could be a possible removal of riparian vegetation at the edge of the barranca, and that would be on the property and not actually the project is not planned to extend off site and into the barranca or into any wetland in any area. It just would be there could be riparian vegetation that's on the property that could necessarily be removed, especially uh, one particular area could be for the detention basin the outfall of the detention basin. And, and the other potential impact area was from stormwater runoff, which was identified before. So this uh, measure would be a review and consent by the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. And the Fish and Wildlife will have to review this and determine if any mitigation measures would be necessary or if a stream bed alteration agreement would be necessary for the project, which it may not be. The county biologists consulted with Fish and Wildlife and with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Services on the project. The next potential impact area is wildlife migration corridors and habitat from light and glare. And that would be, of course, from the project's light and glare on an ongoing basis. 
but with the mitigation, there is a mitigation that would reduce those impacts to less than significant through a light, um, through such measures as a lighting plan. That would require lighting to be directed downwards and fully shielded. Uh, also, floodlights would be prohibited within 300 feet of the branca. Also, there would be automatic sensors so that, uh, that most of these lights would only turn on if somebody's in the area. As soon as they're not, if people were in the area, then those lights will shut off. Many of those lights will shut off. The MND was noticed for public review on December 7th, uh, 2017 through January 6th, 2018. No opposition was made to the project and no substantive comments were made. Planning staff found that the proposed project is compatible with the existing and potential surrounding development and land uses, would not be harmful to or impair the neighboring uses or be detrimental to the public interest, health, safety, or welfare. Proposed project will occur on a legal lot, will not significantly reduce or adversely affect agricultural resources, activities, or operations on site or in the area, and will be cited to remove as little land from agricultural production as possible. Public noticing of the hearing, um, property owners within 500 feet of the project were, of the property were notified. A legal ad was also placed in the Ventura County Star and also electronic notification via the planning division website was made. Planning division's recommendations to your commission is that certify that the commission has reviewed and considered the staff report and all the exhibits, that you find that there's no substantive evidence that the project will have a significant effect on the environment, that you adopt the MND, that you make the required findings to grant a CUP, and that you grant the CUP subject to the conditions of approval, including the mitigation monitoring and reporting program. That concludes the presentation portion of the project, and staff is, planning staff is available for comments now. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, disclosures? Commissioner White? Disclosed. Commissioner Dukas? I have no disclosures. I have no disclosures. And I have no disclosures. Questions of staff? I'm, I'm curious, um, since there's some history with lo this location and previous notices of violation, the original violations were never ad addressed prior to the change of ownership in, on this property. Is that what I'm hearing? But they're going to be they're in the process of being corrected as part of the compliance agreement? Yes, that is correct. Okay. And so that's the CUP is running side by side with the compliance agreement from the code compliance department, our code compliance division. And as there are approximately that I'm aware of that at the last count was about seven or eight violations that I mean remain to be um, addressed. And they're currently working towards that, as in the CUP is part of that process. Okay, and so the original CUP holder is not, not associated with this property any longer? No, that, that CUP expired, and there's been a transition in ownership to okay. the new owner, which is Green Somas. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Anybody want to talk, need to talk to the applicant? I'm just curious, is this the first um, Honeymead uh, operation in Ventura County? Would you mind, would, you, yeah. would one of you? Yeah, I may it, transfer that over to them. Yeah. Uh, there's a little curiosity about what exactly is going to go on there, and I realize I don't have a speaker card, but we'd appreciate your comments. Sure. I'm Michael Cohen for Green Somas, and um, actually, to the best of my knowledge, it is the first. Um, We've gone through some research, and, and this is our, our, I should say, our main business is growing orchids. First and foremost, we're going to grow orchids. We wanted to do some interesting things for the community, which is why the Ag Sales Building will be there and so on. Um, and uh, the Mead was something that came out of curiosity. One was primarily about growing bees. 
and we need bees. And that, that's where it all started from. I see. So we did a lot of research. I thought, wow, this could be very interesting. We looked. It's, it's completely compliant with, um, with the ag, agricultural business um, and growing on the ag property and so on. Um, so it, it was just something that, that we want to do. And it will be way down the road as soon as cash flow starts. Okay. Yeah. Well, that was the thing that I thought was so unique and yeah. so exciting about the project. I mean, um, I know that we have other apiaries like in Piru and there's yeah. a, a honey bar yeah. in yeah. Ojai, <laughs> but, um, but this was really unique and yeah. um, it sounds terrific. Thank you. The whole, the whole project is really about bringing back to the community as well as, you know, the obvious production of growing the orchids and so on. We want to have that ag sales building. We want the, the little area behind it is sort of an agricultural history uh, garden for, for Ventura County. Um, and that's when you were talking about um, uh, the events, they're not so e eventish. It's really about bringing school kids in and, and clubs and that sort of thing. And parents could bring their kids and so on so sounds like a great ideas. resource yeah thank you any other questions we can answer thank you no no okay. excuse me commissioner in point uh, i'm going to ask the same question i asked charles how many people can come to visit I'm, i was trying to look at the site plan and see if i could see the parking area clearly i couldn't but um what are what are you set up for in terms of numbers of people per day or at any one time? You might be able to answer. This is Alan Nelson, this is our consultant. He's a little better with the numbers. Good than morning. Um, as an, an exact count, I would have to go back and look through my numbers. It is really governed by the available parking out there. There is sufficient parking for that. The traffic study, don't hold me to it, there was an estimate of maybe 40 per day, maybe 40, 50 per day. That is on the high end of you know full production, full use of the property, but most of those the analysis did say that most of those trips are going to be pass through trips. I think it was upwards of ninety percent are going to be uh, drivers already on the road going past the site. Excuse me, and your name was? My name is Alan Nelson, I'm a consultant with for Green Summits. Okay, thank you. No other questions. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Very well. Thank I you. Appreciate yeah. your comments. Um, I didn't have any speaker cards, uh, and technically I didn't open the public hearing, so I'll open the public hearing. We have no speaker cards. The applicants have spoken. I'll close the public hearing. Um, no other questions of staff. Okay. I have a motion. Are you with me? Anna? Well, I have a comment. I I think that, that we've made clear on the commission here that, that the county is a big supporter of agriculture, and this is obviously an agricultural project, and we like that. I was very impressed to see uh, um, farm worker housing as part of this proposal because obviously the farm workers brag need to have a place to live and I also am impressed by having a place for people to come and see agriculture in operation as small as it is it's uh, commendable I move uh, staff's recommended actions with the um, the changes that were included in the memorandum we received and I'll second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Can I have a vote, please? Okay, motion passed. Congratulations. Chair Rodriguez, I would I would also like to say um, and, and commend um, Michael Cohen and his um, and his representative Alan Nelson on this project. It is difficult. I know uh, Michael and I had a conversation from Skype from China 
two years ago, right, when he was, when he was considering purchases, purchasing this property. Um, and so it's not easy to buy a property that's in a violation state and fix the violations before you get your business operating. And so I know that he spent a considerable amount of time and effort and energy to get this business up and running. Um, and I want to commend him on, um, on the effort and for Alan Nelson for, for really sticking with it and the, and the staff for, for moving through the sometimes tedious details of building by building to try to investigate what's going on. And so um, they did a phenomenal job. I'm very happy happy to have them in the county, you know, contributing to the economy and, and, and having farm workers here. And so it's, it's an exciting project for the planning department as well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on to item nine, discussion, report from planning commission uh, director on board actions and other matters. Thank you, Chair Rodriguez. So I'm sure if you have taken a look recently at your tentative agenda, you will see <laughs> quite the um, complicated agenda coming up between now and the end of the year. We have a lot going on, a lot of um, complex ordinance coming um, that are going to be coming to you before the end of the year. So on, on July 26, we have the Dark Sky Ordinance that will be before you. Um, we also have a general plan workshop on July 31st. We have the last phase of the local coastal plan update dealing with environmentally sensitive habitat areas on on um, August 23rd. On August 30th, we have a couple of LCA open space wildlife contracts. Um, on September 6th, the Habitat Connectivity and Wildlife Corridor. Um, and on October 16th, the General Plan. Those are all, all dates that hopefully you'll all be able to be here. These are big policy decisions that we're looking at moving forward to the Planning Commission. Um, and so it's going to be uh, quite the year. As far as what's going on at the Planning Commission on July 17th, the, the, I mean the, the Board of Supervisors, the Board is going to hear the appeal um, for the Miners Oaks Water District. Your commission has heard that case. The um, uh, applicant has appealed the decision and that's going forward on July 17th. I'm not sure how closely you track the Board's agenda. There was an item on here of an appeal for uh, Matthew and Jill Clark and that item has since been removed, but it was an appeal of a Cultural Heritage Board determination. And just for your information, the Cultural Heritage Board determinations go directly to the board and not through the Planning Commission. And that's why you would see an appeal item on the board's agenda that, that you hadn't seen here. So that's very unusual. So I just wanted to bring that um, to your attention. And then also on July 17th, the board will be hearing the proposed non-coastal zoning ordinance amendments regarding the outdoor events that your commission heard a couple of weeks ago. So very busy schedule for both your commission and for the board of supervisors. So that's, that's all I had, unless you have any questions for me. Yes. I know that we've, we've been asked and, and uh, we'll need to deal with some uh, beachfront decisions as, as in the case that was continued to August. And uh, since the last meeting, I did reach out to staff about the, this thing. Right, what, I can't uh, Ventura County Resilient Coastal Adaptation Project Vulnerability Assessment. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And it's basically, as I understand it, what, what the county's planning to do about rising sea levels and uh, the loss of beachfront property. And I think it would be a good idea if we could for us, the commission, to be briefed on what's in that so we have a better understanding about what, what planning is doing on this subject. Sure, that, yeah, and I can have the staff come down and do a presentation on that. That is a, um, like a baseline document about where we're at now. It has no policy implications on it, right? It will be using that um, if the board assigns us uh, a sea level rise project. You know, clearly we're going to go back and look at that policy document and see if we can um, develop, develop any uh, programs out of that. But right now, right, we're, that was a grant-funded project and we're finishing that finishing that up, but I will have the staff come down and, and do a presentation on it. It was a great, great project. I would like that. Sure. Yeah. Segwaying on that, uh, Kim, um, when Chris uh, was here and gave us uh, a briefing on the status of the uh, coastal zoning ordinance as it relates to short-term uh, rentals, 
uh, the ordinance that was passed um, in the coastal zone. Um, has that gone to the plan? Uh, excuse me, to the coastal commission for approval, or is it still to be sent uh, before it's returned back and the county moves forward on on finalizing? Yeah, I, I'm sorry, I don't have the answer to that. Either it's gone or it will be going shortly, right? Okay. It needs to be packaged up in a specific format, and so we have staff working on it. So I was on vacation last week. I'm not, I'm not sure if it, it went or not, but I can. Uh, the next time we meet, I can give you the schedule on when it's going to be there, and then, and then when the Coastal Commission staff lets us know when it's going to be heard. I'll keep you uh, Great. apprised Thank of you. that date as well. Great. Thank you. Any other comments? In that case, we're adjourned. Welcome back.